we're gonna start this video off with my boy, Bacardi. I got him off the track when he was five and did the thoroughbred makeover with him in 2016. He competed in jumpers and didn't do very well. The judges said he was too quick. Basically, they wanted jumpers to go like at courses at that competition and, well, Bacardi is not that. Showing as Bacardi B, he spent this past year doing the meters and has plenty of scope to go higher. He's a quirky horse who can get overwhelmed very easily, and it's taken him some time to mature, but he's really come into his own over this past year. He had a pretty successful show year for it being his first time competing at the site and even finished the year champion in the meter jumper division for our show organization. Bacardi has the biggest heart, and he's probably the best horse I've ever had. He's extremely talented and tries his heart out for me every single ride. I love him more than anything, and other than Slu, he's the only horse that I've had that I would really consider a heart horse. Don't get me wrong, I love all of my horses, but there's always those special ones that you just connect with a little bit more. Bacardi has really turned into a great teammate, and he's the horse that I can always count on. It's been a long process with him full of its ups and downs, but I'm extremely proud of the horse he's turned into. Some fun facts about Bacardi. His nickname is Puppy because on the ground, well, he kind of acts like one. He's really laid back and sweet and he just likes to be in the middle of everything. He's an extremely picky eater. He really won't eat treats unless it's carrots. He loves carrots and so far has never said no to those. He also likes to paw when you're hosing him off to let you know that he wants a drink from the hose. His best friend is Bits, and of course they look pretty much the same, so Bacardi is on the left and Bits is on the right. Bacardi's birthday is two days before mine, so I never forget it. Not gonna lie, I struggle to remember birthdays of the other horses because there's so many of them. Bacardi is really the only horse in the barn that I don't use for lessons. Everyone knows he's my boy and nobody asks to ride him. I have occasionally let the kids ride him, but it's really rare for me to do that. It's nice to have one horse that's just for me. He's pretty sensitive and wants a quiet, effective rider, so he's not really cut out for lessons anyway. He's definitely a horse that wants his one rider that understands him and that he trusts. As of late, things have been a little different for Bacardi. I'm planning on making a video that goes more in depth about what's going on with him, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now. These last few clips of him jumping are the last time I rode him on January 2nd, 2024. The next day he went to my vet and we found a fungal infection in his right guttural pouch. He was immediately taken to Root and Riddle where he had surgery the following day. We are incredibly lucky that we found the fungus early. If left untreated, he would have eventually bled out as the fungus would have gotten to his carotid artery. Catching it early also gave his surgery a higher chance of being successful as the horses that are already bleeding are at more of a risk of bleeding out in surgery and not making it off the table. He had not yet started bleeding, so we had that on our side. His surgery went well and after a few days in the hospital, he was able to come home. He's still got a long road ahead of him, and the fungus has to be completely gone before he can return to work. But he's alive and doing well, and that's really all that matters. Now more than ever, Bacardi is like my giant puppy dog that follows me around everywhere. He's not terribly great at stall rest, actually he's flat out horrible at it, so I spend as much of my free time as I can keeping him entertained. Thank you. 
Oh, Frankie, where do we even start with this one? Of all of my current horses, Frankie is who I've had the longest. He was given to me as a four-year-old, and let's just say we've been on a big journey over these past 13 years. We had a real rough start together, having to have my farrier and vet cut out a good portion of his hoof due to white line. He needed a year off before he could be in work. When he was cleared to come into work and start learning to jump, he made it known that he has opinions on everything and he's not afraid to tell you. For a long time, I couldn't ride him in the outdoor because he would literally just spin towards the gate when we went by and slam his body into it in an effort to escape. He'd do the same thing on the lunge line too. Literally just pull away from me and go slam his body into the gate to pop it open so he could do anything but what he was supposed to do. There were a few times where he just simply decided to jump out of the arena instead. When things got sorted out enough for him to be started over fences, he made that process no easier. I kid you not, this horse would not even hand walk over a ground pole. He would rear and pull back or jump off to the side of the pole, literally anything but step over it. Although it wasn't easy and it required a lot of patience from me, I eventually got him to start walking over ground poles. He's pretty dramatic and thinks everything is the end of the world, so once he stepped over a pole for the first time and realized he survived, it got easier from there. The poles started turning into little cross rails, and although he was a little unsure at first, he was much more open to the idea of jumping than before. I think he eventually realized he liked it, and he turned into a solid three-foot horse. He went to a few horse shows, but never really had much of a show career. Several years ago, we found a bone cyst in his ankle and we were able to keep him comfortable for a long time jumping on it. Probably around three years ago, he developed arthritis in his fetlock that progressed to the point it's not really safe for him to jump anymore because that joint is no longer providing the shock absorption that it should. So now, he only does his baby cross rails as we like to call them because I know he misses jumping and it's a way that we can make him a little bit happier. Frankie has made me cry so many tears and made me question so many times what I was doing, but I'm so thankful for it. He's given me a confidence in my ability to work with difficult horses that I wouldn't have otherwise had. These days, he's significantly better behaved than he used to be, although he can definitely still have his moments. His main shenanigan now is not coming in on days he deems too nice to leave his pasture. He's not one of those horses that just like won't let you near them and makes you chase them around. He'll let you put a halter on him and he'll even walk with you for a bit, but if he's not feeling it, he'll pull away before you get to the gate and run back to his friends. I've tried correcting the behavior before, but there's just no point. He is more stubborn than a donkey. And honestly, there are days I don't feel like working either, so there's no reason he can't also feel that way. I've known him for long enough now that I can generally sense when he's not coming in, so it's not usually that big of an issue. I think that's probably one of the biggest things Frankie has taught me. Sometimes you have to let go of the way you want or think things should go. He's made me think differently about training horses. Overall, he's a pretty good boy now. He does lessons and takes good care of the littles, even though he's much too big of a horse for them. He's who beginner riders learn flying changes on. His changes are pretty auto, so if they're asking somewhat correctly, they'll get it. We pretty much only call him Frankie now, although sometimes if he's being a turd, it'll switch to Franklin. He loves his stretchy trot. He's never learned to pick up his left lead normally. He has to like hop into it. It just is what it is at this point. He has anhydrosis, which means he has a lot of trouble sweating, so we have to be careful with him in the summer. He loves water. He's always the one splashing in it, especially when it starts getting warmer. Frankie will live out his days with us. He's been too much of a presence in all of our lives, and he's done too much for me that this is his home and he'll never leave. And honestly, I don't think anyone would really want to deal with him. He is a gray horse and has the typical gray horse problems. He has a lot of melanomas that we're keeping an eye on, but as long as he's happy and comfortable, we're leaving him be. If there's one thing I never have to worry about with Frankie, it's him not telling me when he's unhappy. He'll let me know when they start bothering him, but as it stands now, he's still the same playful and ornery horse he's always been. And he still sounds like a dying whale when he rolls.
Will you be a jerk, Marco? Or will you not? Dun, dun, dun! Marco has played such an important role in my lesson program, and as much of a sassy little turd as he can be sometimes, he holds a pretty big place in my heart, and I am forever thankful for all he does. He really puts up with a lot. He was purchased off of some jog video back in 2017 with the hope that he would be a great lesson pony. Before I owned him, he was imported from Mexico and at one point he was a therapy horse, hence where his incredible patience comes from. He had never jumped before so he still needed a little training which wasn't a problem because my main priority in pony shopping was finding something that would be consistent and reliable and he's been exactly that. He's the pony I can trust to take care of any kid and keep them safe. He may not necessarily make things easy for them, but they're always safe. He's a total kick ride and the perfect pony for beginners to learn on. They're never going to get more horse than they're asking for. Over the years, Marco has given so many kids their first with horses. He's taught them to trot and canter and jump and he's gotten them safely through their first horse show. He's really done a lot. He teaches his kids so many important lessons and gives them the confidence they need to take on more challenging horses. Marco doesn't have a ton of jump in him. He can course up to two foot and maybe do the occasional two, three fence, but that's really all he has. Especially when he is ridden primarily by novice riders. He doesn't need to be the scopiest pony in the barn. He just needs to be safe. When it comes to food, Marco thinks he's never been fed a day in his life. His big old belly says otherwise, but nevertheless, if there's food out and you're not really paying attention, Marco's dragging you to it. And let me tell you, he's insanely strong for his size. He has an extreme hatred for water. He doesn't like any part of it, except for drinking it, obviously. But when it comes to bath time, he's really not a happy camper. Unfortunately for him, he was born the wrong color to avoid being bathed. Marco also hates his ears being touched. If you even get a little too close to them, he lets you know. It can be tricky for kids to learn to bridle him because you have to be really thoughtful about how you touch his ears. <laughs> he has his quirks. Then again, don't we all? But he really has just been the best lesson pony. He's reliable and you always know what you're going to get with him. He makes his riders work for what they get, but that's not a bad thing. His patience for mistakes and even just for the nonsense we do with him is something I hope no one that ever rides him takes for granted. They don't all deal with it the way Marco does. I guess the biggest thing to know about Aqua is she lives in her own world. Her biggest priority is herself. I got her when she was five and like Marco, she was bought off of just some jog video. She did the Thoroughbred Makeover in 2017 where she competed in Hunters. Aqua's show career has been super off and on. We've had a lot of bumps in the road that have kept her from getting in the ring consistently. The latest setback was a soft tissue injury at I think the beginning of 2022 that kept her out of work for the majority of that year. So last year was all about getting her back into jumping and there was some excitement on her part involved with that. In October of last year, kind of on a whim, I decided to take her to her first horse show in over two years. It went so well that she went to another show the following month. Aqua's competed in both hunters and jumpers, but right now I plan on keeping her in the jumper ring and hopefully producing her up the levels.
Aqua is pretty unbothered by most things, but she does have some random things that do upset her. For example, if she kicks sand when you're riding and it hits the fence, you better be holding on tight because she hates that. She lives with Kane and Frankie, and although sometimes she will join in on their shenanigans, for the most part she just ignores them and keeps eating food. Speaking of food, she has this thing she does when it's time for her to be fed. She scrapes her teeth on the bars of her stall and she does it until she gets her food. When she does get her food, she's equally as weird. She holds her leg up and kicks at her food pretty much the entire time she eats. Aqua might have some crazy eyes sometimes and not be super cuddly. She'll headbutt you away when she's sick of you, but she really is a good girl. The kids have ridden her a bit. She's kind of a weird ride, so they haven't done a whole lot with her. She's like lazy, but then when you finally get her moving, she can easily become more horse than you bargained for. She's a little powerhouse and she jumps hard. It's not easy to stay with her jump sometimes because it feels like she's trying to launch into orbit. She has plenty of scope to do bigger heights, but right now the goal is to just find the calm while jumping again. The last time she jumped, she felt great and we did put the jumps up a bit. It's the biggest she's jumped since her injury. Hopefully we continue progressing this year and are able to get to some more horse shows. When I first got Geronimo, he was practically feral. In his five years of life, he had basically no handling, he had no trust in people, and wouldn't even come into the barn. He wasn't really even halter broke, let alone started under saddle. He was underweight and a huge project to take on. Over the past four years, he has completely blossomed into a pony with so much confidence. He now loves people and being the center of attention. He's extremely curious and playful. At this point, he doesn't really know a stranger. He wants to be everyone's best friend. I don't really know how animals that have been let down in such big ways by people have it in them to learn to trust and be so willing to do anything for someone ever again. So when I really think about how Geronimo is now, it just completely blows my mind. Geronimo has such a big heart and he's so willing to do anything I ask of him. I don't think anyone that knew the pony when I first got him ever thought he'd be anything like he is today. He has done some lessons and he has so much patience with the kids, it's really just amazing. He's still a little green to be doing lessons full time, but I've definitely been letting kids on him more and more. I think in time he's going to be a really great lesson pony. He certainly has the patience to put up with mistake after mistake. He mainly goes by Gmo now. I don't actually remember the last time I've heard anyone call him Geronimo. Like I said earlier, he's playful, especially when he's out with his friends. I think he's often the instigator in trying to get his buddies to be chaotic with him. He also has this head toss thing he does that looks really quite painful, but he does it all the time and it's pretty funny. As far as future goals for Geronimo go, right now I plan on continuing his training and letting him do the occasional lesson until I feel like he's ready to do them more consistently. We still have some work to do with the trailer and getting him comfortable while he's on it before I take him anywhere. Hopefully I can find some time to really work on it this year and then if the timing works out, he'll go to his first horse show. At some point it'll definitely happen, but I'm not really in a rush to get him to a show.
I got Kane off the track when he was 5 and did the Thoroughbred Makeover with him in 2017 where he was top 10 in Hunters and top 25 in Show Jumping. He had a whopping 2 starts on the track. He was ridiculously slow. There was no part of that horse that wanted to race. But that worked out well for me because he's made a great hunter. Kane has a scar on his face that he had when I got him. His trainer at the track didn't know how he did it either, but knowing Kane, he probably stuck his face in something he shouldn't have when he was a baby. Overall, Kane is pretty level-headed and patient, so I have used him for a lot of lessons. He can do true beginner lessons or go jump a course with a more advanced rider. He's even gotten a kid through their first horse show, packing her around the walk trot. This past year has definitely been the least amount of lessons Kane's done because I did some serious work on his trailer loading and he became a show horse again. So I tried to keep kids off of him, that way I could work on his training and get him ready for shows. He even did his first rated show last year, which was pretty exciting. Kane has shown up to 3 foot, but last year we just did 2629 since he was just getting back into showing. As long as he keeps loading well, I plan to continue showing him when I feel like he can be set up for success on his loading when it comes time to leave the show because that's really where our problem is. His nickname is Monkey because he's very silly and playful, especially when he's with Bits. Those two are nuts together and tend to get separated pretty quickly. I've never seen a horse as willing to jump from a long distance as Kane. I actually think it might be his preferred place to leave the ground because then he can jump bigger. Kane is a character and he's definitely a favorite of everyone in the barn. He's really sweet and he'll let you love on him and he's a lot of fun to ride. He's one of my favorites to ride and show. I got Cricket in 2020 when I was in dire need of a lesson pony. Cricket has several key personality traits that we're going to talk about. The biggest thing he's known for is his ability to destroy blankets. The first winter I had him, he went through, I'm not even joking, five blankets because he would remove them from his body and completely obliterate them like he's a dog with a chew toy. And by the way, I had clipped him so I had no choice but to keep giving him blankets. This winter is the first time I've clipped him since, and so far we're still on the same blanket, but I feel like as soon as I post this, he's gonna go back to his evil genius ways. The next part of his very ornery and colorful personality is that if he gets loose, he is extremely hard to catch. Like, it takes hours to get him, and he cannot even be bribed with a grain. He seems to escape a lot for a pony that I make a really strong effort to keep where he belongs, but actually this past summer he was accepting bribes, so hopefully that stays. Another habit he picked up last summer is much less desirable, and it's that he now likes to stand in the water trough. Sometimes he'll splash the water, but for the most part he just likes to stand in it. For hours. The last big thing about Cricket is that he has kissing spine. He started jumping out to the side when we would get off of him, and after having x-rays taken, he was diagnosed in 2022. It came completely out of nowhere, but so far back injections have kept him comfortable. We also have a little system for how we get off of him now, just to protect his back a bit. We take him to the mounting block and step off on that so it doesn't pull so much on his back. 
Some of the kids have accidentally forgot and got off of him normally, but he didn't jump out to the side like he would before he got his back injections, so it's a nice little reassurance that he does actually feel better. Cricket is one of the few horses I've ever had that already knew how to jump when I got him. I pretty much produce all of my own horses, so it was a nice little break to not have to do so much with him. He does have some show experience. He showed at his old home, and we've also shown him a bit, but he hasn't been to a horse show since his kissing spine diagnosis. Now that we know he's happier and have a system with him as far as dismounting goes, it might be something I think about with him again. Cricket also had surgery a few months after we got him because we found a bad tooth that needed to come out. It's not something that affects him at all, just a little fact about him. This pony is a mess and always up to something, but it's hard not to love him when he's this cute. I've gotten a lot closer to him over this past year because I've been riding him quite a bit more to get him using himself correctly, that way we can keep his back muscles strong. He's not the easiest to turn and keep straight, but other than that, he's a pretty simple ride. I have a lot of fun on him. Like Marco, he doesn't have a ton of jump in him, so he stays at two foot and under. The kids adore him. They all love riding him. Probably because he's so smooth and aside from Geronimo, he's the kindest to them. He's not known to do anything naughty under saddle. He saves all of his shenanigans for his own time. In fact, he's actually been packing around one of the little riders so that she can really start getting some experience over fences. We all call him Cricky and he really is a good boy that we all love a lot. Oh, Bits. There's a lot going on in his brain at all times, and when I can get him to focus, he's incredible. I wish that would happen more often than it does. I got Bits at the end of 2017 and planned to do the Thoroughbred makeover with him in 2018, but he wasn't ready, so I chose to withdraw him. It was disheartening, but it was the right thing for the horse. His feet were a mess when I got him. He had about six months off while we worked on his feet so that he didn't get injured. The way his feet were were putting extra strain on his tendons and it wasn't worth the risk of bowing one so I waited until my farrier and vet gave him the all clear. So that put us way behind for the makeover and then when I could start training him, he turned out to be super accident prone. Minor things, but enough to keep him out of work consistently. In 2022, he finally got his show debut. He did the Baby Green Hunters that year and had some great results. He's a beautiful mover and definitely belongs in the hunter ring. Last year, Bits didn't show because he started getting extremely nervous on the trailer. He's never been the best about trailering, but it got to the point where I was going to have to take a step back and address it before one of us got hurt. I didn't find the time to really work on it the way I needed to last year. Time slips away quickly with this many horses all needing something. Maybe this year will be his year. I had an absolute blast showing him the year he did show. He's so good at horse shows, and it was really nice sitting on a horse that you know is competitive. I want that back so bad, so I'm really hopeful that I can make his issues with a trailer a priority this year. Bits is a really sweet horse. He loves attention and being close to people. His favorite thing in the world might be water. He loves splashing in it and playing in the hose, more than any horse I've ever seen.
Last summer, Bits actually did a handful of lessons. He was super well behaved for the kids, although he wasn't so sure what the little legs were asking at first. It took him some convincing to trot with the smallest kid that rode him because he was just so confused. He's a highly sensitive horse, both emotionally and physically. He needs a quiet rider, not just quiet in the sense that they can stay out of his way, but that can also be quiet with their emotions. He needs someone that can help him find peace because like I said, there's a lot going on in his brain. I wish he could just talk to me and tell me what's traumatized him and where all of his anxiety comes from. He's got a whole team of people that know he's special and who want to see him excel. So hopefully one day we can put all the pieces together for him and get to see him at his best. Out of all the horses, Tilly has been here the least amount of time. She got here in April of last year, so I haven't even had her an entire year. I somehow ended up with another small pony despite saying I never wanted one again. I had kind of been looking for lesson ponies and then came across her ad and she seemed perfect. Smaller than I was wanting, but I figured it could be good to have something smaller for the tiny kids because all I have are large ponies. So she was bought off of her video and we had her shipped to us. Things have gone nothing how I hoped with this pony, but that's life. I'm gonna try to keep this very short here because I plan on making her a more in-depth video in the future, but basically she got here and was the exact opposite of her sale videos. She was mean and to put it very nicely, a little crazy. She looked like she was on the lazier side in her videos and then she got here and was a complete runaway. She would completely ignore a half halt and just toss her head. To be honest, I was a little scared of her. I'm going to put a clip of how she was at first so you guys can see that I'm not being dramatic, but I'm going to save the rest of it for the video that's actually all about her. Something was definitely wrong, so we started going down the list of what could have caused her to flip a switch. We started with the simplest solution, which was having her teeth floated, and after no luck, my vet and I agreed that treating her for ulcers made the most sense. Long story short, ulcers were definitely the issue and she has so far been a much nicer and happier pony with what we're doing to help her stomach. Right now, Tilly is just working on the basics. She's still pretty green jumping, so we've just been doing small jumps. She's been doing a lot of trot jumps and mainly just focusing on staying straight and calm. She has done some lessons and she's really been pretty good. She's at least been a lot nicer to the kids than my other small pony was. The kids have been able to canter and jump her so hopefully things stay on this track for Miss Tilly. I really quite like this pony now. I might even say I love her. She's getting more and more fun to ride as she's learning. Like most ponies, she's a little pig. I learned a few weeks ago that she knows how to open the feed cart. I'm thinking it's something she's done before at a previous home because it wasn't something she even had to think about. She knew exactly what she was doing. She's also a very aggressive eater. My new hobby has been watching her eat because it's hilarious how she tries to fit her entire meal into her mouth in one bite. At the moment, I still plan on keeping her as a lesson pony. For a while there, I wasn't so sure, but she's definitely a lot closer to what I expected her to be now. <laughs> Thank you.
Roxy belongs to Bella and Chloe. They've had her for almost three years. This pony has been so patient and taught her kids so much in their time together. She's also hands down been the most patient pony dealing with all of Nacho's shenanigans. Both girls have been able to show Roxy a little bit, but they haven't shown her in probably a year and a half, so the video you're seeing now is a little old. Roxy is a lot of pony. She's a little girl with a big motor. So I've ridden and shown her quite a bit too to sort of help keep things on the right track with her. She's a lot of fun. I always loved showing her. I think this pony might have been a ninja in a past life. She's got some pretty crazy moves when she's feeling good. Roxy also has a spot on her neck that she loves scratched and she makes some pretty funny faces when you find it. We call her Roxanne a lot. I don't really remember where it came from but it's definitely stuck. Especially if she's doing something naughty like pooping or peeing on the cross ties, which by the way, she really loves to pee on the cross ties. You always hear a loud Roxanne <laughs> coming through the barn. Your pony left you a present. Roxanne! She's a little pig and will do anything for snacks. Unfortunately for her, she's had some lifestyle changes and doesn't get many snacks anymore except for the occasional carrot. Without going into too much detail, because keep in mind she's not my pony, Roxy has been through a lot recently. Her kids have definitely been taught patience and how the horse's well-being always comes first. It's been a long road with her, but Roxy has been doing much better these past few months. She's not such a chunk anymore because we've cut back on her snacks, and she's quite a bit healthier. The pony doesn't love her restrictions, but it's for her own good. Roxy has been coming back into jumping over this past month, and so far it's going well. Her kids have been riding her a million times better than they were even just last year. It's been so fun to watch and I'm happy that they have their pony back. I know Roxy's happy to be back too. I sincerely hope things stay on this path for Roxy, not just for her own sake, but because I think everyone involved with this pony could use a break. Thunder is kind of a butt, hence why we call him Thunderbutt. He's clearly got a big personality and thinks everything is a toy. If it's within his reach, he's definitely gonna try and mess with it. There have literally been times he's grabbed the hose while I was filling his water buckets and turned the hose around on me and sprayed me with the water. He loves to bite at your clothes and he really loves his Twizzlers. He loves playing in water too. He's a silly horse. Of all the horses in the barn, Thunder's been here the longest. This horse has been in my life for a really long time. I think for probably around 15 years now, although he hasn't been my horse for quite a while. Back in the day, Thunder was a cow horse. I ended up training him to jump and he made a really cute little hunter. I showed him quite a bit when I owned him and he always did really well.
if I could pick my ideal lesson horse, it would be something that goes just like Thunder. He's so straightforward, plus he jumped so cute, and it's really kind of hard to find horses like him. I ended up selling him over 10 years ago, but he's still boarded here, so he's never left my life. These days, Thunder lives a pretty retired lifestyle. He just hangs out and blesses us with his lovely personality. Like Thunder, Zora also lives a pretty retired life. We're coming up on four years that she's been boarded here. Zora used to be an inventor, but had stopped competing before she moved here. Her owner still rides her some, and I used her occasionally for lessons when she first came to the barn, but for the most part now, Zora just hangs out. Zora is pretty unbothered by everything. She likes having her own space. I don't think she's very impressed with her friends she lives with. She usually just tries to block them out, but occasionally she'll join in on whatever chaos they're causing. She did, however, love the donkey very much, but he had to move to a new home because he learned to crawl under the fence. The habit was out of control and it just couldn't be dealt with anymore, so he went to live with another donkey. For the most part, Zora is pretty unproblematic. She does hate being in a stall and she'll try to break out and she also has the tendency to kick her feet out of her feed pan and make a mess, so I usually just dump her food on the ground so she won't do that. Other than that, she just does her own thing and hopes that everyone will leave her alone except to bring her breakfast and dinner or her favorite snack, oatmeal cream pies. It's basically me so I get it, except I don't like oatmeal cream pies, but I do like when people bring me snacks.